Let's pray. Lord, as we come to look at your word, may it remind us of truths we already know. May it surprise us with something we learn a bit again, even though we may have read it plenty of times. Um, may it challenge us because your word is alive. And uh, I thank you for it. Thank you that it helps us to understand you. It helps us to understand this world that we're in, and it helps us to understand ourselves. And uh, I pray that you will use it for your glory. Amen. Now, I'm going to try and see if I can get control. Do I have control? Now, ah, good, I do have control. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, well, you probably have noticed, you might not have thought about it so much, but when a baby turns up, things kind of go out the window. Um, you know, w when a new baby you know, turns up, uh, uh, all the plans and all the things that you sort of, you know, you normally could do, and even the intelligent conversations you could normally have, kind of disappear. Uh, when a baby comes, suddenly people are gooing and ahhing, you know, um, or they're either looking like, oh, because they're sleep deprived, because they have discovered that babies do not sleep eight hours a night from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, they have their own unique sleep pattern, uh, which you've then got to uh, adapt to. And then there's the complete reorganization of life. Uh, how you pack your car. You know, I still remember we had a Toyota Corolla, the amount of stuff that we used to shove in that car for our, you know, when we just had Helen was amazing. Then more children come along and you realize you don't need that. You don't need you know, you, how you pack your car, um, what you take with you when you go on holidays, that becomes interesting. And um, what you need to do in order to quickly <laughs> duck down to the shops to pick up that one item you forgot when you've got a baby. There's no sort of quick about it. And spontaneity? <laughs> no, no, that, no, you can't just say, let's go. Oh, no, we, the baby's sleeping. Okay, we'll, we'll wait. Right. And, and a task that normally took 15 minutes? Mm. Now it's more like a safari, you know, expedition, planning for it and everything. Babies change life. And uh, this is Eliza. This is my moment to brag. For those who don't know, she is the amazing, my amazing granddaughter, or mine and Faye's amazing granddaughter. It happens to be the daughter of Brendan and Catherine as well, um, you know, who uh, came home yesterday. Uh, yep, uh, nine, what is it, four kilos, 29 grams. She was a big bub. Big bub. Yeah, cute. Um, and yeah, and I can't wait to see her. And uh, now she has changed the dynamics of our family. Uh, my son has said to my daughter, we don't need to argue over who the favourite child is now. We have been replaced. You know, uh, while her birth will have an impact on us, her family, and on you because I'm bragging about her and because of the marvels of technology, I can do it big. Yeah, you know, I, I don't have to just have the phone. I can do it this way. Uh, yeah, she's impacted your lives. And she'll go on to impact lives with those that she meets throughout her life and also hopefully by the things that she does in her life. Now, I do not expect her to have as big an impact as the birth that happened over 2,000 years ago and whose birth is still impacting families and communities and nations today. Some nations feared this birth and they still fear it and what his birth means. Some communities have been amazingly blessed because of his birth and how people have responded to his birth. And right now, there's an individual who's saying, you know what, your birth change is changing me. I'm going to trust you. And I, I'm going to live my life in a way that would honour you. Now, it's no surprise that I'm talking about the birth of Jesus. After all, it is Christmas, just so you know. And if you forgot to do your shopping, a bit late. And we're talking about 
him being born. And it's a church. You would expect to talk about Jesus today. But what might surprise you about his birth, it wasn't all oohs and ahs. It wasn't, oh, he's not cute, 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 cute. No, his birth was going to rock everyone's understanding of what it means to be alive. There are a few events re recorded about his actual birth, though. Interesting enough, this got pointed out to me, and I never thought about it too much. Matthew has part of one verse. Matthew just says Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. That's it. That's the record of Matthew's record of Jesus' birth. Mark and John, zip. Luke actually uh, goes a bit better. He does two verses. He says, and while they were there and in Bethlehem, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. And it's because of that we have nativity scenes. But that's all that is said. So those three verses, or two and a half really, are all that record the birth of Jesus. What the Gospels actually tend to do more of is record the actual impact his birth had. Uh, you know, Matthew records that there's some wise guys, not wise, that's, that's the wrong word probably. Um, yeah, this was like, as soon as I said it, oops. Some intelligent, learned men called Magi who came and traveled a long distance, about one half, you know, 1,500 kilometers, it's estimated they were to travel. That's a decent trip. Yeah, even our day, it's a decent trip. Um, they came looking for this child. Uh, and, and, and upset Jerusalem and certainly put King Herod into a tailspin. Uh, and he reacted to Jesus' birth, sadly, by trying to eliminate him. Uh, Luke tells us that there was this bunch of uh, guys just minding their own business, guarding some sheep, doing their normal daily job, when angels turned up and announced the birth of Jesus. But he also recalls the response of two notable people in Jerusalem eight days after Jesus was born. There was Simeon and Anna. And Anna, when she saw Jesus, this baby who'd done no miracles, hadn't done anything, was just probably looking cute. She says, the one we've been waiting for is here. Yeah, so this devout lady was so excited. Yeah. The other one was Simeon. And his response was a bit of really, when you read it, is a mixed bag. Uh, he's, he gets up there and he praises God, but he also gets up there and says a few things that uh, you know, were not helpful. I don't think were particularly helpful in some ways. Uh, Luke tells us that Simeon had a reputation that I think all of us would like to have. He is known to be a righteous and devout person. So he was a guy who sought to live a life that God asked him to live. He, he kind of brings up for me the image of Job. I don't know if you ever read about Job. In the early chapters, you know, he would get up there and he says, you know what, my kids might have unintentionally done the wrong thing, so I will make sacrifices for them. You know, he was a very, he wanted to honour God with his entire life and the way he did things. And this is what Simeon is. He was a righteous and devout man, and he had an eagerness about him. He, he got up there and he was looking forward uh, to the Messiah. Now, the Messiah is the one that Israel were waiting for to rescue them. Uh, you know, he'd been promised, but he hadn't turned up yet. And yet Simeon was eager for his arrival because he, was, he had the Holy Spirit upon him. He was led by the Holy Spirit. You know, this, this is a guy that's close to God and wants to be close to God and seeks to be close to God. And on this particular day, because of that, he gets led by the Holy Spirit to the temple 
uh, which coincidentally happens to be the same moment that Mary and Joseph turn up with the baby Jesus. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. Oh, oh sorry, it did say he was led there. Maybe God had something to do with this. I'm glad someone nodded. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, oh, you know, everyone just went, oh, maybe not. That wouldn't be. Yeah, pretty sure God's got his hand in this one. And so he, go, he goes to the temple, and there he sees, sees the baby Jesus, and he took the child in his arms. And as soon as I read that, I had to go, boy, things are different nowadays. You know, new baby's born. Eh, wait a little while before coming and seeing. I automatically thought he wouldn't have had a whooping cough from vaccination. To those who wonder what I'm talking about, you obviously haven't had a child recently, well, a grandchild or anything like that. Uh, but anyway, he takes the baby and he gets up there and he, and, you know, this is a baby, right? You've got to think about this. This is a baby. He's looking at this baby. Jesus has done nothing. You know, he's probably gone, I'm hungry. He's probably, you know, I need changing and I want to sleep. Really? That's the life of a baby. And yet, here's this righteous, devout man taking this child, and he's so excited. He says, oh, <laughs> Sovereign Lord, you can let your servant die in peace. I mean, what an opening line. Imagine being Joseph and Mary when <laughs> and hearing it. Well, uh, not with my child in your arms, thank you very much. But suddenly he is content. Suddenly he is, he's at peace with life itself because God had kept his promise. He says, I have seen your salvation. I haven't seen the plans of people. I haven't seen the plans, my own plans come out. I've seen your saving plan, yeah. which, by the way, is prepared for all people. Now that is a radical statement in itself because you know he's a he's a Jew. You would expect him to say prepared for Israel, but no, he realizes that this little child that he's holding—that's God's plan for all people, everywhere. It is the light to reveal God to the nations. <laughs> I'm not sure how Mary and Joseph are coping at this moment. Can you imagine something like this pronounced over a child, your child? I mean, um, I certainly didn't pronounce anything like this over my kids. But that's what is said about this baby. And he is the glory of your people, Israel. You know, beautiful blessing, beautiful statement. Wow. Praising God. And here's a guy who says, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. My time's up now. I can die in peace because I've seen God's salvation. But here's the, the flip side of what he says as well. Because he mentions that this birth is not going to be oohs and ahs. And it's not going to be, you know, you know oh, everything's going to be wonderful. Um, <laughs> My boy got up there and was talking about the frustrations and joys uh, that happened in the hospital. And I went, I went, welcome to parenthood. Because it's full of joys and frustrations. Well, Jesus' birth, it's full of blessings and heartache. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Not surprising. That's, you know, hey, that's our son. Yes, we know, you know, that he's special. Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to, the, to Mary, the baby's mother, you know, this child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall. Whoa. And many others to rise. In other words, your child is going to upset the balance around here. Your child is not just going to pass quietly through history and not have a ripple. 
This is not the little pebble that's chucked in the pond. This is the kid who wants to get the biggest rock possible and see how, you know, how big a splash they can make because that's what this child will do. Many in Israel will fall and many others will rise. He has been sent as a sign from God, but guess what? You think in Israel, the people who honoured God, he'd be accepted? No, many will oppose him. There's going to be opposition to your child. They're going to reject him, they're going to hunt him, they're going to, and as we know, if you, you know, read the story, if you read the Bible, they're going to kill him. Yeah. And as a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. And then he makes this really painful statement to Mary, and he says, and a sword will pierce your very soul. Jesus' birth changed things. We know that this came true. There were, you know, the order of things got turned upside down. Uh, not only in Israel, but throughout the world. I mean, the, even the Roman, the great Roman Empire eventually gets turned upside down. And there was many people who, who saw the truth and started to follow. I love how when Peter was talking about after Jesus' resurrection and he was talking to the crowd and the number of Pharisees, the religious leaders that came to follow Christ that day was huge. They had their life turned upside down. Nicodemus in the middle of the night going, yeah, we know you're from God, but we don't understand and you need to be born again. How can an old man like me do Nicodemus, I'm talking about your relationship with God. You need to be born again. He turned people's life upside down. We know he was opposed. Herod tried to kill him very early. We have that terrible story of, you know, in, around Bethlehem, that area, every boy, two and younger. You know, whenever I read that, I, I, I just can't believe it. But that was how ruthless Herod was. I'm not taking any chances, we'll eliminate. Uh, there's an estimation somewhere, you know, maybe 30 to 40 children were killed because it was, you know, not a huge population, maybe a bit more. But still, do that because he opposed what Jesus would stand for. And the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. How often is that true? And how often did that come true? Especially like with his disciples. You know, Judas, Peter, you know, they, all of them, their deep hearts got revealed. The rich young ruler, he says, what do I need? You just need to let go of hanging on to money. And it was revealed that he couldn't do that. It came true. And guess what? Her soul was pierced. She had to watch her son die on the cross, knowing that he was dying for the world. Because he, as it was said in the blessing, the salvation which was prepared for all people, that was why he came. And I can easily see Mary and Joseph just standing there going, what do I do with that? Because here's my cute little baby boy, and yet he has a destiny to turn everything on its head. Luke records when their parents had fulfilled all the requirements of the law, so they were very law-buying. They too sought to honour God and everything. They returned home to Nazareth in Galilee. Uh, there the child grew up healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom and God's favour was on him. And that's, you know, we get, then we get one story about his childhood and then, then, of course, his adult ministry started. Today is the day that we remember this birth. 
we, we've chosen the 25th of December. Yes, it's not the day he was actually born on. That's because we, know, we don't really know the, the exact day. As you could see, uh, hear, uh, hopefully you heard, Luke and Matthew, they don't tell us the date. They do say he was born. But we, it was chosen that the 25th of December would be the day we remember he was born. This baby came as a blessing into the world. This, this baby came to save all people. And so for us, those of us who've actually discovered that, today is a day where we go, thank you. Thank you that you came. Thank you that you taught some of the disciples who then went on to teach others, then we went on to teach others who went on. And eventually someone had the nerve to say to us, uh, have you looked at Jesus? Have you thought about who he is? And with God's grace, we've done that and seen the truth. And so we celebrate today. If you're not one of those people, then I would like to just gently suggest that today's actually may be a challenge, a gentle challenge that God does. To look at what today is really about. Not to see a little nice, cute manger scene, but see the birth of one who came to save, one who came and who will and still does upset the apple cart because he's not happy just to leave us where we are. But he is one who is willing to go in extraordinary lengths to be able to help us see the truth and be set free. So for those of us who, who know Jesus, have a very blessed and amazing day today. Of course, realise that Christmas may be on the 25th of December, but we celebrate it 365 or 366, depending on the year, days a year. For those who don't know him yet, I'm confident about this. Check him out. Can I ask you just take maybe what you think you know, and actually explore what's actually said. This is from a guy who got up there and said to God, if you're real, prove it. <laughs> and I had this image now. The day I said that, God just went, beauty. I've got him. Because he did. Christmas Day is a great reminder we have a God who loves us. May all of us be blessed by that. Let's pray. Lord, we want to thank you that your birth changed things. And it wasn't just a blip on a radar. It wasn't a dot in history. It wasn't, it wasn't just sort of some passing sort of rumor of things. But your birth heralded the change that was happening. Right from that young age, lives were changed. Kingdoms were, were changed. And people either responded with joy or they sought to oppose you. And we still, still happens today, Lord. We acknowledge that in some parts of the world, this, what we're doing now, not allowed. Because you are a threat, a threat to the status quo. But also, I want to thank you that your birth heralds just how amazing your love for us is, that you chose to become human. So thank you, Lord Jesus. Happy birthday. Give you the prize. Amen.